Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today I'll be giving you guys a little overview of the first major expansion for Magic 2014, Duels of the Planeswalkers. In this expansion we've got five brand new decks, some new single player campaign missions, as well as some brand new challenges, and I just wanted to sort of show off everything that the expansion entails to give you guys a good idea if it's something that you want to pick up. Uh, myself personally, it's definitely worth the $5. I think it's a, it's a nice addition to the game. I mean, I guess there really isn't any expansion that ever comes out for a Duels of the Planeswalkers game that I, I don't end up picking up. But let's just go ahead and give you guys a quick overview. So once again, we've got five brand new decks. Uh, there's the Dodge and Burn, Lords of Darkness, Hall of Champions, Sylvan Might, and the Sword of the Samurai. I'm going to briefly go over these. And I'm not actually going to show gameplay from all five of the decks because in that case this video would end up being like an hour long <laughs> instead I'm just going to give you a look at some of the cards and a sort of a general overview of how the decks function uh, So this first deck the blue and red deck titled dodge and burn it's pretty much what you expect it to be it's a burn deck we've got lots of direct as well as mass damage available uh, so let's start off here we've got things like the earthquake for mass damage bane fire here for direct damage and it's also actually very interesting because if you pay five or more for the x it can't be countered by spells or abilities so really good against any uh, blue decks with counter in them Get the uh, Kiln Fiend here, as well as there is the other creature that was in last year's blue-red deck. Uh, this guy right here, the Wee Dragon Knots. Uh, both those creatures just get pumped up off your instant and sorceries, uh, making for some heavier hitting turns, essentially. Uh, right over here, this is a quasi counter spell it counters a spell but instead of the card going to their graveyard it goes back to their hand so it's like a delay of a spell and you also get to draw a card so that's sort of the that's the trade-off that you get it's not a full counter spell they will replay it eventually but you also get a card draw in the process and at the very least you set them back a turn Starstorm here for some mass damage, Searing Spear, direct damage, uh, the creature pump ups right there. We've got some target damage in the Electrolyze, uh, counter spells there in the Cancels. Thoughtbind, another counter spell, not my favorite, but it's a counter spell nonetheless. Uh, Char for direct damage, actually not bad. It's three lands. It does four damage to target creature player and two damage to you. Might sound kind of bad, but what makes this especially pretty good and what actually turns it into a rare card is the fact that it's an instant cast you can do it at any time so it's a nice finisher or to do something at the end of your opponent's turn some more direct damage here and invoke the fire mine uh and then also you can yeah it's it's draw x cards or deal x damage to a creature or player so you, it's got a multi-purpose there which is why it cost uh two blue a red and an x uh, compulsive research for some card draw we've got some damage in a breaking point or mass creature destruction uh, sulfurous blast this is a really cool card four lands two damage to each creature and each player and if you cast the spell during your main phase, it does three damage instead. So again, mass damage out of this. And then we've got uh, a few more late game spells. Uh, the Draining Welk, which is a counter spell for six, but that also pumps itself up when you counter that spell. Charm Breaker Devil's letting you pull instant or sorceries uh, from your graveyard to your hand during your upkeep. We've got card draw and opportunity, and then a fire blast here for some direct damage. Fire blast is so good. Oh, if, if there are more of those available in the deck, you should definitely run those. So anyways, yeah, this is a blue-red direct damage removal deck. This is this deck in particular, and there's a few others that have some nice mass removal in them. Uh, I think the addition of all this mass removal and this damage specifically from this deck will do very, very well against what's currently the big three in the core set for Duels 2014, which is, of course, the White Weenie deck, the Zombie deck, as well as the Illusion deck. I think this deck with its mass, with its mass removal capabilities and its mass damage will do very well against uh, those three particular decks. And that should help curb their prevalence back in the... Uh, in the multiplayer gameplay, you should be seeing a little bit less of those with the existence here of Dodge and Run. Let's go down to the second deck here, Lords of Darkness. Uh, this is just a big old black deck with some nice beefy creatures and some interesting utility. We've got the Mortician Beetle here. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1. It is a rare card. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on Mortician Beetle. So this would be really good when you follow it up with something that forces your opponent to sacrifice a creature. Uh, Festering Goblin, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. When it dies, target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. We've got the Onx Mage here, which you can give a creature death touch until end of turn. Very nice for finishing off things that your opponent blocks. 
but then they actually likely won't block knowing that you've got death touch on the board but this is even good for your blockers so your opponent's sitting with creatures if they want to swing at you and you've got mana open they run the risk of losing their creatures even if it's not enough damage to block them the death touch will finish them off foul limp uh two lands for two two flying good when it enters the battlefield you lose two life still a pretty good card uh, it's fairly solid i could consider removing it i haven't really taken a look at the uh locked cards yet we've got the diabolic edict uh pro pretty much a must play uh same with the doom blade creature removal so important uh, i got the suit imp it's a one two for three flying and whenever a player casts a non-black spell that player loses one life so very good against any opponents not playing black uh soul cage fiend for a three two when it dies, each player loses three life, not a bad. So you're noticing a, a pattern here. We're losing life and everyone's losing life. Uh, but the idea is that if you can outpace that damage that's going all the way around, uh, it'll end up working out in your favor. Triumph of Cruelty, you've got two of those in the main deck. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent discards a card. If you control that cre uh, the creature with the greatest power tied for... Wait, what? At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent discards a card. If you control the creature with the greatest power or tied for the greatest power. Okay, so if you've got the highest power creature in play during your upkeep, this enchantment will force your opponent to discard a card. Not bad. Tendrils of Corruption for some direct damage here to a creature, and then also you get some life. Uh, we have also got the Mutilate for some mass damage and the Damnation for some mass removal. Again, this is the sort of stuff that I'm talking about is going to help deal with those super aggressive aggro decks that we've been seeing. Uh, five lands for 5-4 flying. The Bingy Upkeep uh, target player draws a card and loses one life. Not too shabby. Uh, we've got this guy, five lands for 5-3. That's probably something that will end up getting removed when I actually make the deck. Promise of Power. I remember this card being good. Let's uh, check what it is. Refresh my memory here. Choose one. You uh, draw five cards and you lose five life, or put an X, uh, XX black demon creature token in the flying in the battlefield where X is the number of cards in your hand as the token enters the battlefield. Okay, and then you can pay its ent entwine cost to do both of those. So you dry, draw five cards, and then if you were able to pay the entwine, you're also going to get a huge, at least a 5-5, five five, because you just drew five cards. You're going to be getting at least a 5-5 five five black creature with flying in play, and chances are you'll have more than just those five cards, so it could be even bigger. Uh, Harrowing Journey, target player draws three cards, loses three life, so we've got some card draw, and then at the end we've just got some big, beefy demons with all sorts of crazy abilities that are super strong. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, this is just a uh, black removal deck. You're taking some damage, but you're also doing some damage in the process and it's got some life gain to hopefully offset some of the damage that you've taken next deck here hall of champions we're really just burning through these huh uh, so hall of champions deck is interesting it's a three color tricolor white blue and green tough to pull off it's also an exalted deck so it'll be interesting to see how people build these and how it gets balanced so we've got some exalted creatures if you don't recall when a creature attacks alone, it gets pumped up for every creature with Exalted in play. So basically the idea is that you're playing a bunch of creatures with Exalted, and then you're attacking with one creature a turn, pumping him up for all the Exalted permanents that are in play. So it's a great example of attack with the guy with the first strike, and then he gets pumped up for every Exalted. So we've got a ton of different Exalted creatures. Uh, this one's Exalted, you can sacrifice it to ping off artifacts or enchantments, so that's actually a nice thing to have. A Flying Exalted, if they don't have anything to block Flying, this would be the one that you would attack with, gets pumped up for every other Exalted. Uh, some creature pump up here and the single Blessing. We've got to this, it, talking about, you know, I kept on talking about how there's creature removal, there's a lot of it. So we've got the Marshall Coop here, uh, two white and an X, put X 1-1 one, one white soldier or creature tokens onto the battlefield. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Mass creature removal is very prevalent now. They were, ev it's pretty evident that Wizards of the Coast realized that those big three aggro decks were running rampant. Uh, this is a nice card. It's a rare. It's one of each color, though. Gonna be tough to play. It does have Exalted to pump up your other Exalted and destroy target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. So this is someone that you would just sit back with. An opponent attacks with a creature. You let the damage go through. Boop, ping it off just like that. Uh, we've got a nice uncommon here. It's a three-four lifelink. So again, if this is if you have him in play, he could be the single guy that you attack 
attack with. Uh, the Dauntless Escort 3-3, three, three, sacrifice it to give the creatures you control indestructible until end of turn. We've got a Defender with Exalted to pump up. So yeah, tons of different Exalted creatures reach Exalted so they can block flying. Uh, creature pump ups like this guy, the Behemoth Sledge, plus two, plus two, lifelink and trample to an equipped creature. Uh, I've got the Bant Charm to destroy target artifact or put target creature in the bottom of owner's library or counter target instant spell. That's very nice to have. Nice counter spell in this tricolor deck. Let's see. Enters the battlefield. Creature you control. Got plus one, plus one until end of turn. Trample Exalted with this guy. We've got Flying Exalted with this guy. Although he is mighty pricey. I don't know if I would play with that. That's eh, a tough call. Uh, finest Hour. An enchantment with Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, if it's the first combat phase at, uh, of the turn, untap that creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Very, very good in a deck like this. Play with one or two of those. I think there is a second one. Actually, yeah, there's one right there. Uh, do, 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 do. Creatures you control get plus one, plus two until end of turn. Untap those creatures. It's also got basic land cycling, so you can get rid of it to search for lands. This would be something you'd probably play just for the land cycling to try because you have a three color deck to try to filter through and get the stuff you want and then we've got uh, vigilance reveal the top card of your library if it's a land card put in the battlefield otherwise put it in your hand not too shabby and then some big crazy creature for seven trample comes in the battlefield with seven one one counters whenever it deals damage you gain that much life if it would be dealt damage prevent it and remove a single one one counter so there you go uh, pretty much an exalted tricolor deck is what we've got here moving on two more decks to take a look at so the next one here is oh my friend is going to be so happy about this i've got a friend who absolutely loves elf decks and i think he will be thrilled this is sylvan might it is a green elf deck that's exactly what it is we've got a ton of different elves a bunch of synergy off those elves uh, here's an elf with multi kicker you can pay the multi kicker enters a battlefield with a one one counter for each time there was a kicked other elves you control get plus one plus one for each one one counter on it Think about that for a second. So, uh, so multi-kicker, you can pay that as many times as you want. So if you had five lands in play, you could uh, tap one to play it, and then the additional four for the multi-kicker, put two one one counters on it, and then all of your other elves would get plus two, plus two. Three counters, plus three, plus three, four counters, etc., etc. Taunting Elf. All creatures able to block Taunting Elf do so. So this is something that you set up for a big attack. You've got a ton of elves in play. You attack with all of them. Everything your opponent controls has to block ta and that Taunting Elf, and everything else goes through. Uh, we've got another one of those, Essence Warden, uh, doo -doo -doo. whenever another creature enters the battlefield you gain one life, it's basically a Soul Warden for green, very very good. 1-1 uh, one, one Hexproof Elf, not too shabby, uh, let's see, this is a 1-1 one, one Elf for one, can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach, we've got the Fauna Shaman, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, put it into your hand and then shuffle your library, you know, get rid of a garbage elf, search through for something nicer. Uh, whenever another elf enters the battlefield you gotta put a 1-1 one, one counter on this guy, he only costs two very nice uh, this is two lands for two two elf however if you cycle it for four all your other elves will get plus two plus two until end of turn so that's something if you're going for a big swing you drop that well wisher is so good oh my lord uh, you tap it to gain one life for each elf on the battlefield so good oh my lord so good in a deck like this it's gonna be really fun to see people playing these elf decks with well wisher uh let's see this is a two three elf uh, do, 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 do. if it would die put it on the bottom of your library instead so that's something that's consistently coming back uh big old legendary three lands for two two you can tap a green to regenerate another target elf and you can tap five to give elf creatures you control overrun basically overruns a spell plus three plus three and they gain trample until end of turn it's got a built-in overrun plus you can regenerate your elves that's pretty much a no-brainer for this deck three lands for two two flash when caller of the claw enters the battlefield put a two two green bear token onto the battlefield field for each non-token creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn so you've got a uh, a bunch of creatures that died one turn this has got flash which means you can play it as an instant during your opponent's turn if you want you have a bunch of creatures that die drop that in play you get a bunch of two twos to replace them it'd be super amazing if those two twos were elves but unfortunately they are bears but nevertheless it's a good way to offset some losses that you may take imperious perfect two two for three other elf creatures you control get plus one plus one plus you can tap one tap it to put a one one elf token on the battlefield uh, three lands for a one two elf you can tap it give a target creature plus x plus x until end of turn x is the number of elves in the battlefield so again you're seeing all the synergy between the elves uh, three lands for a 2 2 until in turn target force becomes an XX tree folk, where X uh, to, to do is the number of elves you control 
So there you go. Pump up. Uh, you turn a land into a creature till end of turn. Makes it a, a good blocker, a good attacker, whatever you want to use it for. Lead the Stampede. Look at the top five cards of your library. Uh, top, yeah, top five cards of your library. Reveal any number. You may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put those revealed cards into your hand. There you go. So you get to search through for more creatures. Uh, put a 1 1 counter on target creature for each elf you control. <laughs> Uh, the elf decks are so fun. Heedless one, it's four lands for a star star. Tra it's got trample, and it's got power and toughness equal to the number of elves on the battlefield. Uh, Sylvan messenger, two two trample. Enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all elves revealed this way into your hand, the rest on the bottom. We've got the ambush commander. Uh, force you control our one one green elf creatures that are still lands. Sacrifice an elf, target creature gets plus three, plus three till end of turn. That's dangerous though, because if your opponent has mass removal, they also destroy all your lands. So be careful with playing that card. And then Voice of the Woods, tap five untapped elves you control, put a seven, seven green elemental creature token with trample onto the battlefield. I think this deck's gonna be a lot of fun to play. I really like elf decks and Wellwisher is kind of super OP. That's all I'm saying. Okay, last deck that we're gonna take a look at here. You see, I'm just going through the cards. Could you imagine if I were playing full games? This video would take forever. So this particular deck, uh, this is an aggro deck. It's a little bit slower than some of the other aggro decks, but the cool advantage that it has is this deck is filled with creatures with Bushido. Now Bushido is an effect where whenever the creature blocks or becomes blocked, it gets plus one plus one for each Bushido available. So for example, this guy's a one land for one one. If you attack and it gets blocked, it becomes a two two temporarily until that combat phase is done essentially. Uh, so Bushido is very cool, makes your creatures much more potent than they, you know, one land for one one, whatever, okay. Bushido one makes this a much more effective creature. So we've got a ton of creatures with, with Bushido and then a bunch of creature pump ups and this deck has swords in it. And I'll show you what the swords are when we get there. They're unbelievable equipments. And in fact, um, it has some, but beyond the swords, there are some additional really strong equipments. So here's a pump up plus three plus three for a creature to land a turn. We've got a two land for a one one flying Bushido one. Uh, Bushido two that attacks each turn if able. We have got this, this is a decent equipment in and of itself. Two lands come into play, equipped for three. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and has first strike. Uh, some spot removal here in the Lightning Helix for three damage to our creature player. You gain three life. A nice little side advantage to that. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn, meaning it will attack us first strike damage, and then it attacks a second time, doubling its damage for a turn. Uh, untap all creatures you control. Samurai creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Very nice for, like, post an attack. Your opponent... So you attack, your opponent goes, they attack, you drop Call of Glory, untap all of your Samurai, uh, or untap all of your creatures, and any of them that are samurai get pumped up, so you can use them for blockers for the turn. Very nice card. First strike, plus Bushido 1, so in combat it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and these are the swords. Oh, if you don't know, if you've never played Magic with swords, these cards are so good. Okay, so first the Sword of Fire Ice. It's 3 land, artifact equipment, equipped for 2. Equipped creature gets plus 2, plus 2, has protection from red and from blue. Whenever equi equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, Sword of Fire and Ice deals 2 damage to target creature or player, and you draw a card. So you equip a creature, it gets plus two, plus two, pro red, pro, bl pro blue, does damage to a player. It deals then two more damage to a creature or player, and you get to draw a card. Sword of War and Peace. Three lands, equip for two. Creature gets plus two, plus two, this time protection from red and white. Whenever it deals damage to a player, Sword of War and Peace it deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in his or her hand, and you gain one life for each card in your hand. <laughs> the swords are so good and the biggest thing is the protection because when a creature has protection if your opponent's creatures are that color they can't block it so the damage goes through and then the sword triggers whatever wh whichever one of these two bonus effects you get it's unreal uh, here's another decent equipment three lands equipped for two equip creature gets plus three plus one whenever a quick creature dies return that card to the battlefield under your control if it's a samurai card and then when when, when this card oath keeper uh, takino's daisho 
is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, exile equipped creature. So that, that part kind of stinks, but... <laughs> but the, 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 the part, the fact that it gets plus three, plus one, and then the second part, uh, as long as they don't destroy this, this particular artifact, then it's great. Uh, an okay one here, plus two, plus one, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to attach the club to that creature, so it's a club that's cycling between your creatures whenever you play them. A Bushido one. Uh, when it attacks, samurai creatures you control get pumped up plus one plus one. Bushido one, when a samurai dies, you may put a one one counter on this particular samurai card. Uh, flying Bushido one for four, that's not bad. Uh, Glory of Warfare, as long as, you're, uh, as long as it's your turn, creatures you control get plus two plus zero oh for their attack. As long as it's not your turn, creatures you control get plus zero oh plus two for the defense, pretty good. Uh, we got another one of those. We've got a Stone Hewer Giant. Five lands for 4-4 four, four Vigilance, which means it doesn't tap when it attacks. Tap to tap it. Search your library for an equipment card. Put it onto the battlefield. Attach it to a creature you control. Shuffle your library. Nice. Uh, seven, six lands for a 3-3 three, three Bushido 2, turning it into a 5-5 five, five in combat when blocked or blocking. Each other samurai creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each point of Bushido that it has. So when Bushido is active, your creatures will get pumped up for that. Morning Star. Oh, I remember this card being amazing too, if I remember, memory serves me. Uh, six lands, 5-5 five, five flying. When it dies, target player skips his or her next on tap step. Tap up to five target permanents that player controls. Okay, not, not super amazing, but that, it's definitely very good. They skip their on tap step, and you get to tap a bunch of their permanents. So, and that includes lands, so that's really, really cool. Uh, the Fallen Star, five lands for uh, six lands for five five flying. When it dies, deals five damage to each creature without flying. Uh, cleansing Fire, let's see, five six seven eight lands for a four six. Enters the battlefield with a divinity counter on it. If you cast it from your hand, it's indestructible as long as it has a divinity counter on it. You can remove a divinity counter from it to destroy all creatures. Pretty cool. And then finally, Avatar Slaughter, eight eight. For eight, all creatures have double strike and attack each turn if able. <laughs> I like this deck. I like Bushido. I like the equipment. Uh, there's a bunch of really nice equipment as well in the cards that still need to be unlocked. Uh, let's see what it was. I think this was. Look at this. Six lands. Equipped creature gets plus five, plus five. You can exile this card, put a five, five dragon token on the battlefield uh, to do, and then return to the battlefield under the owner's control. Wow. And then you return this card. Wow. So you can you can basically get a, a temporary 5-5 five, five flying creature in play. Or no, the 5-5 the five, five flying token is permanent. And then this returns back into play. <laughs> that is really cool. But yeah, I wish I really wish there were more swords. I, I don't believe there are. I think it's just the two. But this is a pretty cool deck. All of these decks are pretty cool. And yeah, I guess that's it. So those are the five brand new decks here. The Sword of the Samurai, Sylvan Mites, Hall of Champions, Lord of Darkness, Dodge and Burn. And we'll be showing some gameplay of these decks throughout the course of playing Friday Night Magic. So the first episode will be up tomorrow, and I'll be playing one of these five decks. I'm still not sure. You know, I really like... Um, I I'm really keen on the Sylvan Might and Sword of the Samurai decks. I also think the Blue-Red deck will be especially effective in the current metagame. And I don't think these two decks are bad. I think the deck I probably like the least out of the five new ones is the Hall of Champions. Not that it's necessarily a bad deck, I just think with three colors. And I, I think that these other four decks seem like they could be a lot more effective. And I'll be interested to see how this mono black Lords of Darkness deck actually does. Yeah, so let's go ahead and quickly, I'd just like to briefly show you as well. So here's the expansion. Um, the campaign was added. And with that, we have got uh, a bunch of new. So this is the first one. So you start off here with this Alara, and you have to play a single game um, against this particular deck, which that's the three-color deck, if, I, if memory serves me correctly. I've already played through all of this this afternoon. It took me about, I think maybe about an hour and a half to play through all of them. And then this first one right here, so you've got uh, a couple of things. Uh, there's our encounters, which if you don't recall, encounters are specific things that will occur every single game every turn will be the, sa the same from your opponent and it's often somewhat gimmicky uh, so you just got to figure out the tempo and then play a deck against it that will beat it and then you've got just straight up games here and this and then beyond that there's one more right over here Kamigawa on the far flung plane. and in Kamigawa same sort of thing we've got some encounters which again are these gimmicky events that will 
the, the, the turns will be the same every single time you play them, and then some actual physical games, and then there's also a few Planeswalker duels in which you just have to fight against uh, the different Planeswalkers. And then beyond that, there is also a revenge campaign where you can play against the different Planeswalkers in a harder difficulty. And then there are also several challenges, and maybe I'll show you some of the gameplay through the challenges. So let me just, I guess I'll just do, uh, we'll just do this first challenge, for example. I don't want to spoil them for you guys. Uh, these ones actually took me a little bit longer than the challenges uh, to figure out. They took me a little bit longer than the challenges from the core set, so that's interesting at least. Okay, so Mountain Assault, we have to beat them in one turn. So just a quick overview. Uh, he's got a, a bunch of uh, lands here. He's got these two non-basic lands, and then he's sitting on a plains. He also has Oblivion Ringed, my Palaka Worm, and then he's got a Curd Ape, which is it gets one plus one plus two as long as you control a forest, and then he's got a 5-5. Five five. So we have got to figure out a way to get through. So we've got a 1-1 one one with Mountain Walk, which means if he has a mountain, this guy can't be blocked. Unfortunately, he's got no mountain. He's got these two non-basic lands and then a plains. But what we have in our hand is, well, let me quickly go over. Uh, it's a three lands for one one. I can tap to sack it to deal four damage to our creature. Not going to do it. I have Blood Moon, which makes non-basic lands mountains. Now that playing this will turn these non-basic lands into mountains, which will mean this guy with Mountain Walk goes through and can't be blocked. He's at two life. I need to do two damage this turn. This is still only one damage to him. We've got the Unsummon to return to our creature to owner's hand. We've got the Naturalize to destroy to our artifact or enchantment. Now we could think, okay, let's naturalize the Oblivion Ring and get my 7-7 back. But unfortunately, when he comes back into play, he's got Summoning Sickness, so we can't attack with him this turn. And we have to win this turn. And then finally, we've got this thing right here, Sido Shape. It's three lands for an instant. I get to choose a non-legendary creature on the battlefield and give and turn target creature into a copy of that creature until end of turn. So the victory condition with this particular one, uh, this was relatively simple. Drop the Blood Moon, turning those non-basic lands into mountains, as you can see here. And then what we're able to do is we can attack, and because he has Mountain Walk, he cannot be blocked. And then before damage goes through, combat uh, blockers have been declared, he was unable to block. Before damage goes through, we do the Saito Shape. We choose him, and then we turn him into the Curd Ape, and Curd Ape becomes a 2-3 because we have... Oh, I'm supposed to let... <laughs> Let's redo that because I didn't wait till after the blocking phase. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, we're going to do that again. I don't need to explain it all again this time. I need to wait. <laughs> I need to wait until... I was like, oh, wait a second. I didn't wait until blockers were declared. Okay, so... There we go. Now we got, now now it's after blockers are declared, and then we Sido Shape, and then we turn this into a Curd Ape, and then two damage goes through. There you go. That's the first challenge. Congratulations. How exciting. All right. Well, I guess that'll do it. Um, again, what all I really wanted to do was give you guys a brief overview of the decks, show you sort of what the expansion entailed. Uh, like I said, I went through this this base campaign in about an hour and a half. I still have the revenge campaign to go through, but. I just wanted to unlock all the decks. I'll I'll do this stuff eventually. It just doesn't matter to me at this point. And a bunch of new decks. It's pretty exciting. I'll be looking forward to showing you some gameplay with those decks uh, starting tomorrow in Friday Night Magic. And that's that. Uh, some new cards and some new challenges for you guys. Some new campaign. It's a $5 expansion. Well worth it in my opinion. I think these decks are going to be a lot of fun to play, so that's going to do it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Force here once again with a little overview of the Magic 2014 Duels of the Planeswalkers first expansion or DLC, whatever you want to call it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, keep watching, and keep owning.